Welcome back. Macy's is planning to close 150 stores over the next few years. Express filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and it feels like every week there is a new headline about a store closing or leaving Connecticut's malls. The I-Team has been researching how all of this impacts you, your wallet, and your community. We begin tonight with a look at what this means for how we interact, and our consumer investigative reporter Cassidy Williams is joining us to explain. Cassidy. Well, Aaron, the first mall was built in America in the 1950s. Malls quickly became a staple of American culture, but we all know things have changed, and it's not just the malls that are changing. For decades, the mall was a sort of town square for community. Search Channel 3's archives, and you'll find plenty of proof. Fast forward to today. You'll find Arthur Carparil walking past a J.C. Penney set to close next month. Once I lost the anchor stores, that started the domino effect. Carparil has been getting his steps in at the Crystal Mall in Waterford for the last 20 years. He's a walking encyclopedia of the mall's history. It used to be a hangout. It was the social media of the day where people would come in here and converse or just, you know, uh, socialize. The quiet that now sits over the Crystal Mall is not unique. A Capital One research study found the number of malls across the country declined 16.7% per year from 2017 to 2022. Originally, shopping malls were quite spectacular. It was exciting to go to a shopping mall. Not so exciting anymore. George Ritzer is a sociologist who studies consumer culture at the University of Maryland. He explains not only have some malls lost their sparkle, they have lost their efficiency. It's much more efficient to uh, order something from Amazon. Add all of that up and you get locked up storefronts. That Capital One research study found shopping malls are more than twice as likely to sit vacant than other types of retail space. But ask people of all ages, there is still a desire to have a place both to shop and to connect. I like to shop in person because you kind of like get the full experience like you get to try stuff on and like you actually get to like communicate with people and online you can't do that that much. You need stores you know people shouldn't have to be hiding in their house and just ordering online you know. It used to be that parks would perform that function but as the government got out of providing those kind of public places businesses decided that they could create those kind of communal places. So what will step in to replace the traditional shopping mall's role in creating a place to gather? People still need a connection and they'll always need to seek out other people to get that social connection. It's just not going to be here. Not here, but where? The answer is something we can't yet fast forward to. Now, there are malls in our state that have found ways to reinvent themselves. For example, the Samford Town Center is focusing on sports and entertainment. We'll have more on that later this week. But first, we look into how all of these changes are impacting your wallet. That story is tomorrow at 5. For the IT, Cassidy Williams, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.